We're going to look at Autodesk Publisher real quick. Just to understand the interface, you have your standard tools up at the top. Uh, I actually don't use a lot of these very much. Uh, I probably could get into the callouts and labels a little bit more. Most of the things I use are coming off my cursor when I uh, right click. <clears throat> you have your canvas or sort of your history of parts. You can use this to sort of bring things in and out of the model. And then you've got your history of keys and sort of screenshots all the way across. The, the one thing to know before I really get started on this is I always try to go into the tools and modify my background. I like to like Photoshop and put like UK logo on it. Um, what that does is it allows that to always be there. It also allows it to be on a white background, which I think makes the parts look a little bit clearer. I think it comes in as gray. I'm not really that certain. It is important to know that the resolution of this image changes with the resolution of your screen. And so I actually have to have one background for the house and one background for the work uh, if I'm doing that. But, you know, it, it's worth it. I think it just makes it look cleaner. Uh, when I go in here and I start working, I'm going to try to use everything off my navigation cube. And so you'll see that I sort of bring it into the view. Uh, and that view is just the, the home space for it. And then I'm going to try to think about how, if I was a teacher, how I want to go about making this. And so I don't want to make it like left to right where, you know, we have this piece come in and the wheels and then this and then that each drive assembles and this wheels. Because I want to have the kids make this side, the center side, and this side all at the same time. So I can utilize three kids' time rather than one kid's time. And it's just going to make it to where it's a better experience for the kids. They get done better. Their build time is going to be more like three hours rather than eight hours. And they're just going to have quicker success. And if they can get something up and running in one day, it's just a lot, lot cooler for them. And I think if we don't split the work out for them, we run into issues with that. So let's look at just sort of let's walk through this. So we have that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on this middle part first. So I'm going to hide everything else. And the nice thing, though, is that if you go in here, you can actually use like the shift and control, or you can hide the whole thing at the same time and bring it back in. I'm going to break that part down, and then I'm going to explode it. There's a little secret sauce to this, so I'll show you that in a second. And then this is what I really want to show you. So you notice that there's like a pause, like a pause here. So this screenshot looks exactly like this screenshot. What's really going on is that all the parts that I'm bringing into the next screen, which are here, are all moving into place here. And so in this time, I've moved all those out and put them in the right location. The easy way to do that is you make this slide, you take a screen capture, all right? Uh, you do another screen capture, and then you hide everything in the second screen capture and move it beforehand. And then you highlight everything again and put to home. And so you've got, this is everything with those parts hidden. This is the actual one that we made. And this is them all after we clicked home. And it sort of makes it look really cleanly. And you'll see I've done that multiple times. So nothing happening, everything appears, and then everything comes down. And it just makes it a cleaner video. We're gonna go back, allow the students to reference it to where the robot is. We're gonna bring part of it over. Uh, so we can just see the wheelbase. We'll do the exploded there. I'll show you how to do this a little bit better. Bring it back together. Bring the assembly in. And then here, you'll notice again, I've got like my lift or my pause spot and then all the other bolts being moved in the second spot. I think it's really important to sit there and bring them all in and get them into the right location first and try to utilize the ability to move them all at the same time. And so when I was setting up this slide to be captured, I select all four of these, I move them all out of the team, I move those all out of the team, and vice versa. The other thing is that I try to not add trails until I'm done. So like if we're looking at uh, these two here, these four, sorry, I only put trails, oh I did put trails on all those. All right, that's fine. A lot of times if they're coming out horizontally, I'll only put trails on the further ones just because I think it makes it look a little bit better. 
we get them all to come together, and we get our assembly. Let's look at how we do those exploded views real quick before we move past. So again, I've got the home button that I'm sort of working with. I'm going to take multiple screenshots. I just find it's easier to make a bunch of screenshots rather than and go back and delete them. I'm going to have it to where I move this entire thing into that corner. I'm then going to have my exploded view and my compressed view. I'm actually going to take these two back to back. And so I'm going to sit there, I'm going to get rid of everything in this one. So I'm going to hide the H drive, hide everything else. I'm going to take this one right here. I'm also going to take that one right there. I'm just going to reorder that because it just makes it look a little cleaner. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slide like this, which is just the top vertical of it. Um, so I clicked on this button and I sort of moved everything into place. And what that allows me to do is it allows me, so like these two, I probably shouldn't have moved like that. So it could be uh, restored home. Let's move. I'll come right back. And then like this one, I probably need to move down. Oh, wait, there's not enough room. Well, I can back out a little bit, move it over a little bit. Let's put it right there, right back where it was. And I'm going to like highlight everything because there's not enough room there. And I can move them all as a, a unit. Oh, good. Now I can actually move this down. The other thing that I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to be very progressive with my trail. So I'm going to highlight everything that's far away. And I'm going to bring my trail visibility. And what that does is if I do it that way, I know that I don't have to add trails for these parts, or these parts, or those parts. Uh, I typically don't like putting them in for the metal pieces and everything. And then bring it all together. Let's see here. Let's put those in. The if you saw right there, what you'll see is that these little parts showed up. The motors when they actually go in are um, just big assemblies, and so I can click and get different parts within that. And so I tend to move parts away from the motors. I realize I could move them through the the history because they are sub assembly. It's just easier in my mind to do it this way. And then. These little shaft collars are also kind of important, so I'm going to ship those out, bring in trail visibility, I'm going to ship this one out, bring my visibility again, cool, and then what I'll do when I have that set up, I'm going to duplicate the slide, new slapshot, and bring it home. I'm going to try to somewhat mask, like match the look here. So if we're there, all right, so I need to get my motors about right there. And probably not going to have that. I can maybe get them a little bit closer. The problem is if I do that too much, I lose these two. So let's move that back in. Got multiple moves. So I actually have to go back and shift some stuff a little bit but that's okay but then when I sit there and I move that piece into this location it looks a little bit more seamless and I've already got in there so let's look at the play we got the motor we got the expansion we got it moving over I need to get rid of those couple bolts there moving forward And so forth. Um, what would have been nice in this slap, snapshot that I've got is one, these should have been deleted. So let's get rid of those. Take the visibility off and I'd like to have trails on these. Let's add those back in. Now we can sort of see the where things are going. Take a look at it again. Hold still, and still moves up to the right, explodes out, move down. Cool. I probably need to add more time into that. 
And so those these will just be deleted. If I need to add like go into this one and take a couple more snapshots. I also need to go into this and delete those little bolts out of it, which I'm not going to do for this video, uh, just because I've already made this one. And so those are the basics to it. I think when you want to go and you want to export, the best way to do that is to go into the video. And what I'm getting the current best out of is out of AVI. And instead of compression, I go to configure, and I actually use full frames uncompressed. It takes forever to compile the thing even at the university, but it gives me pretty decent resolution. Almost all the other settings are going to really compress this down. We're going to lose a lot of image quality, which we need. And so, good luck with it. I hope it works.